moments. And here we are into the draft for game number one. OK Man Breon. Get rid of Vi. She's out of here. So we're not going to be jumping onto that one. I think Rumble, absolutely a necessity. I don't think Pool Bay should be allowed to play Tristana either, as Sylvie's brand getting a bunch of respect. And in oh, fact, I like Sylvie that. in general going to be the big focus here, as the Lord musteth be denied the crocodile. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, they got me. <laughs> yeah, the, How did they know? A cheeky giggle there as well, as you can see. The man has an emote on Renekton, which some might argue is even cooler than a skin. Yeah. And he has trading cards, and guess how many of them I have? All. All of them. All of the cards. Gorky going to get taken away here as well. Uh, Breon is, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. I really like this band face, you know? This, I, I think this is These good. are correct bro bands, I would I would agree. But yeah. it does allow uh, Young Jay to play the Sejuani. Is Sylvie going to pull out in Italy? Is it is that Ivern? Might be Ivern, might be Zyra as Noodle well. Forest. Could be Zyra. We'll see. True. They have gone for that before. Both of these time. teams, I don't expect, are going to take huge risks when it comes to the draft. I think that both of them are going to be very, very simple, nothing crazy. We see a lot of teams kind of get into this, when you get into a funk and you just keep trying. And sometimes it works, right? We saw this with Breon against T1. Yeah, there were obviously some circumstance, uh, circumstances which made T1. I liked it when you said um, circumstances. Well, that's actually probably that's, more accurate, that's more accurate, uh, accurate yeah. than circumstances. <laughs> but it, it was, there were obviously some factors going into that. But I think even outside of that, Breon did look a lot better in that matchup. Ooh. As that, I actually love. Imagine that's going to be Sylvie. Allows you to have a lot of impact in the lanes, which I think for both these teams getting ahead early is going to be really big. I don't really trust either of them too much. As Talia Nar, probably going to be the tier list picks here for OK Man Bro, but I don't. I've been very vocal about that. I feel like Sejuani, the prio, I'm okay with. Yeah. But it does feel. Yeah, it doesn't. This doesn't is not surprise sparking the, the happiness vibe. And then it's going to be like either self counterpick Cassante or. Will he go GP? I mean, I'd yeah. like the GP a lot. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good pick. Yep, that's an anti nar It's oh. harder to play out, but is definitely a strong pick into the nar. <laughs> is very uh, execution better. This is a lot more stable, but also I think a lot worse when it comes to the yeah. matchup. I think you're really going to suffer a lot more. The Jace to me, I, I do get though. I think Jace is the type of champion where if you make one or two mistakes, unless you're Zayus, you are out of the game. Yep, Zayas and Keen, I think, have the Jace cards. Yeah, I think uh, Jace doesn't. Jace, oh, Keen doesn't lose. So, like, with Keen, he doesn't even. Yeah, and even if Keen does lose, Canyon's there to stop him from losing. And then if, if Canyon's not There's quite Lahens. enough, then Lahens yeah. is there to stop him. From uh, and, and for Zayas, we all know that his KDAs are but distractions as he uh, picks up his gold and, and, and then kind of takes over the game. So, I, I think the comfort for Meow is understandable. I think he's looked really good on Aatrox. Yeah, in Challenger he looks fantastic on it. Yeah, even even in the LCK, I think he's actually been uh, pretty successful individually. It just hasn't mattered at all. And that is going to be the big testing point for both these two teams today, is how is the decision-making going to look? Because that is my biggest issue with both of them. Like, now that Call Me is gone, for example, I think Call Me had a lot of laning phases that were just not acceptable. Um, that should make a big difference. Here for Nongshim. Where's Kallax, though? Uh, He's just also, in right? no, no, no. Yeah, well, sometimes it, it, it's it's hard to keep track. Nongshim yeah. is doing a whole lot of hot seating. Uh, you have Odd Eye, you have Lucy, you have. It's, it's, we shouldn't, it's, shouldn't get into it, but there's a lot. We can get into it on Monday. Yes. When we resume Challenger, it's going to be back once again. So a little bit of a heads up for that one. But now let's focus on this final ban. Another AD carry, just ban Zeri, ban Ezreal, ban Ezreal, ban Alistair. Ban Alistair? Yes. Chiu is very obviously going to play Ezreal here. I mean, I would just that pick Leona. That seems like an, uh, yeah. I, I, the, I think the upside of Ezreal is that he does feel like he's a cut above. He also go Zeri. And then if you, go, if you would go Zeri, you just go Leona. And then you get but if Zeri. You, if or... you pick the Leona, then Envy picks Ezreal, has a great laning phase, and does nothing in teamfights. Like we saw last time he played Ezreal. Yeah, that does actually make sense. That could be genius. Oh, I, Instead, guys, it's just going to be Senna. I, I'm not the biggest. So I, now I'm looking like, is it like Poppy Senna? We're going to pick an AP pick here for, for Sylvie. Are we going to completely go off the wall? I mean, Chronicler, so 
We've, we've been talking about Is Bro needing Nautilus? to get a win. If Bro don't manage to win, I think their composition looks fantastic. It's, it's pretty tier listy on the top side, but Ezreal Leona to round this out. Okay. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm not. Um, yeah. Uh, the Orn has been the favorite. The Nautilus was up. Yeah, no, I, I mentioned that. It's. So, I don't think Guger's Nautilus has been great. We'll see how Guger's Orn is going to look. The one cute interaction I do love is that Orn can break the Talia wall. I always think that's funny. Yep. So, that's something. But when the look. Well, I, with both of these drafts, there's a lot of stuff that you look at and you go, hmm. Yeah. So, on one hand, I think the lane matchups for Brian are looking amazing. Uh, mid is obviously pretty neutral, but you're winning top, you're winning bot pretty hard, and you have a jungler that is de not as good as Poppy, but decent when it comes to setting up aggressive plays and dives. Then on the flip side, I think the top half of BNK is a little bit weak. Like we saw it actually in the DK series before that. I think getting value out of your Sejuani is quite hard with this. And Nongshim in a match where you don't trust either team to win the game quickly, the Nongshim comp feels great, right? You have Senna, you have Azir, you have Orn. Is that enough? Yeah. I don't know. Aw, uh, this is all, it's the thing, it's the Saturday showdown as well. We got a Saturday showdown as well. They know. Absolutely. Right. And I would go a step further and say, this is the real Saturday showdown. Well, after how the last one was went. a 2-0 unceremonious shutout. That's not what we want. What we want is slow paced, okay? Methodical. One kill. Just like. Per 30 minutes. Yes. Three games and home at 3 a.m. That's what we are getting here today. Let's dive onto the rip of game one. And here we are, making our way onto the rift, where we will reside for quite some time. That's what I'm feeling. Of course, Nongshim, they have a composition that very much wants to ruminate, you know? They want to marinate for as long as they possibly can before they really start heading towards that dinner table. And bro, they're a team of players and coaching staff that also wants to do as little as possible. <laughs> for as long as possible. And so we have a clash of styles here between these two squads. <laughs> that, that doesn't help me at all. What do you What do you mean by the bro description? Give well, me something. I just mean that the like composition the is We're irrelevant. <laughs> With the noodles, I get it. It's like, oh, it's noodles. Let's do food analogies. I wasn't actually Let's doing an anal a food analogy. I just said marinade yes, because I were. liked the word. Yes, you were. Oh, well, I mean, I did it accidentally. Trust me. I know, <laughs> I know you're lying, Atlas. <laughs> so Maybe I'm lying mainly to myself. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I think we have plenty of di uh, time to dive into oh, that yeah. in this uh, we could, We'd have a full therapy session if you wanted to. So we can, we can dive as deep or as shallow as you would like. But don't dive shallow. That's very dangerous. Okay? Just look for the signs. I, There's I, no diving. Atlas, trumpet. at some point during this class, I'm going to drop the how does that make you feel? And I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's going uh, to be good. It's going to be good stuff. <laughs> so look, looking at the early laning phases, expectation is that, uh, especially in the side lanes, Broyeon really should have an edge in the isolated 1v1s. I do think that the Poppy specifically is a pick that has so much agency in, in all of these lanes. There is setup in every lane. Obviously, for Fisher, it's only post six, but Mihal, Guger, Jiu can all help with setting up ganks for Sylvie. The downside is that your clear is substantially slower than the Sejuani. Sejuani has, especially for a tank, actually a really good clear. We'll see if any dives can be found. As a yeah. follow and Envy could have played this, you know, early game a, a bit more aggressive, but they're. they're take, oh, there we well, go. Well, there we go. Some aggressive as Guger is going to press the bellows breath and sacrifices half of his health bar. He did, you know, not get CC'd, so that's good. The health trade is not so great. Yeah, subpar. That's all right. Envy and uh, Polo just going to take control of the wave and push that one in. No harm, no foul there, really, as, of course, the piercing darkness is going to help out. Good seismic shove here from Pool Bay. And this was one of his champions as well uh, back in Challenger. I think Pool Bay had a very eclectic champion pool. I he think did. We all think about uh, Pool Bay's Swain, his Akali. 
um, and his Azir and things like that, uh, sort of the, the key ones, but also had a few great uh, Talia games. Uh, knowing that Lucid is a Vi guy does make some sense that uh, he would have played some Talia. Really does. Nice cancel there. It's not going to be as value as it could otherwise be because Envy obviously has to teleport when that to match because you know Guga is going to have it as well. So Jiu on Senna. I, I, I'm a, I think Jiu has, has not had the greatest split. I'd argue Jiu hasn't the greatest year. I think even in spring, he didn't yep. have nearly as many of the highs that he did. He generally last needs time a Neela game to get him in the zone, and he hasn't had a Neela game so far. Yeah, the, the most standout game that we've had recently was a uh, uh. trap here. Proactive. Oh dear, Polly making his way in. There's a step fast presence, but the permafrost is going to go down. Ooh, the ignite's ticking, but they're not actually able to get on over. I think that was a flash auto away from almost being able to lock that one down, as the potion was ticking alongside. But still, not going to invest really anything at all. They'll be able to take a raptor camp as well and send Sylvie home. We'll see if Nongshim can get anything going, but the early shove and even the fret on plates of this combination, this 2v2, is, is not really high. If this was, you know, a Fali or Rosari, there would actually be an angle. But yeah, as I was saying, I really am not the biggest fan of Jiu. Senna, as strong as she is, I do think is more of a facilitative pick. Much more, like, and eventually you become a big carry, but even then, you're not a hyper carry, right? Yeah. Uh, you're more of a nuisance that scales into a, a very viable damage threat, but it doesn't really compare to things like the Zeri. It doesn't really compare to, like, the Ephelios, the things that we've seen Jiu have uh, a really high level of impact in us. There's not a lot of main character energy coming from Senna. She literally is, even as an AD carry, in her own lane, not the main character. Yeah. And uh, Jiu, he is. That is, that is him. He is the guy that knocks him. He is on. him. He is him. And uh, you know, we'll just have to see whether maybe he can prove us wrong. Maybe Senna can be the main character. And uh, we just haven't seen the Jiwoo interpretation of how that one is supposed to go. As Guga moving uh, up and down in the lane, just trying to keep at least his eye on some of the experience that is coming his way. This wave is starting to stack up, though, so he will be able to get some of that. Haven't really had a look at the top side of the map, as the Aatrox versus Nara is something that we have seen so many times throughout the years. 2022 comes to mind. Um, and in fact, so many more of them before that, but that one's sort of the one that sticks out. And Morgan teleports back up towards that top lane. There is a 2CS difference or something like that between the two top laners. And they both still have flash and everything like that. So everything is sort of ducks in a row here in this early game, outside of Bro making that proactive play around the Raptor camp. Something that you can expect from Bro is generally that they've got some set plays that they have in order, sorted out for the early game. And uh, once they run out of those, <laughs> <laughs> things tend to slow down momentarily. And it makes sense. League of Legends is a beautiful game, but early on it's pretty, you know, pretty on Reels experience. It's like a 2D platformer. You know, you're just getting yeah. from A to B. And you can take a couple of different routes, but generally it's very easy to yeah, get do up some the bonuses other. on the side. Yeah, you, know? you know, like, a, you know, get all the letters or get all the secret paths. Uh huh. Pick up whatever uh, mushroom you can find. Depends on which 2D platformer is your favorite. Yep. Some but of then them even have warp barrels that take you to the very end of the world, and then you can, you can dive into the next one. Those there's there's so, many, cool. so many yeah. possibilities. I think that's um, uh, likened to like a 15 minute victory or. I think uh, we had one of the fastest games of the year over in the LCO very recently, which was like a 16.02, oh, look something at, like look that. At Atlas still, still keeping up. <laughs> yeah, trying my bit. best. Uh, <laughs> it is hard. Um, but yeah, that was a that was definitely a very fast one. And yeah, a game like that, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're going to see it between these two teams today. It's not really their their style. No. But I, uh, I, well. Yeah, 16, yeah. you may have misinterpreted that for 60, and that's more like yeah, what's on the that card. Sounds, that sounds appropriate. Nicely done there by Fisher, actually. Very yeah, cute play. Shift Still stands forward. tanks most of the combo, but Bay taking a bit of a rough trade there. As I was saying, early on, so it's really easy to have pathing. As oh, Young J gets the flash out of Fisher. Fisher wasting no time there. He sees the piggy, and he is flashing. That's good. So these, these type of plays? Great. The problem is that once it opens up, you go from a 2D platformer to an open world game. And yeah. it's a sandbox. And, and, um, oh, three. takes a journey there, and in comes Youngjae. That is going to be the ulti out from Sylvie. Oh, no! the walk up! And light on fire 
rare tactic from Polu. Oh, I love that. Okay, and that is going to be first blood going over to the Bros. And Breon strike first, Atlas. And they were already striking. You know? Well, they were punching. All they were that punching. Setup. That's the first knockout right there. Fisher getting taken out. Ooh, and uh, Plug Knight was what was written down. Sounds like a Pokemon name, but that's just Polo and Ignite mixed together. Shout outs to the production team for that one. That's beautiful. Maybe we could have a graphic of Polo and Dragonite mixed together. Did you know Leona has uh, one extra damage on her Ignite because uh, she's a Sun character? Isn't that not actually a thing anymore? No, it's also not not even remotely true. It, it used to be a thing with the glasses. Is now Jiwoo's taking a lot of damage. He's going to wait for the wall to move past. Yeah, no, I was just I was I was trying to see if I could get you with that because it sounds just close to real. Uh, yeah. It's not. As we no. take another look, actually really well done here by Paulu, uh, even with him getting shuffled back. Fisher was already low from the, the earlier trades. walk up and ignite, I love it. Really, really straightforward. Walk forward, point and click, and mm -hmm. credit to Polo. I think uh, him being in that position at the time, really catching the zero of guard. And Fisher, I actually think Fisher's laning phase has been a lot better than I was expecting. And also, uh, call me at a lot of struggles there, really didn't adjust very well to the LCK. But I do think he lacks impact, which funnily enough, Hmm. Fiesta was probably the most consistent in some time. He practice. had impact in every way. Yeah, sometimes bad, but sometimes good. And call me, I think post laning phase had some moments. As oh, the shove catches, but Fisher actually holds on to his uh, shifting sands button. I actually thought the in, uh, the interrupt had have occurred there, but instead he just doesn't press the button. Takes the damage, but still gets out. What I'm trying to say is F Fisher struggles even when he's ahead. Yeah. And he's uh, currently not doing too hot. We'll see. The skirmish can be big. They have an Aatrox level 9. Yeah. All right. They are keeping them at bay. The steadfast presence value is just absurd. Fisher stuns himself going through all of these rocks. As finally, the counter kill does come on in. The no fun allowed cone is going to be utilized. Though shout out to Valdez as Morgan breaks the chains that bind. And he will get himself out. So it is one death on the side of the bros, but now Envy taking matters into his own hands, taking them out of his hands, back in the hands. Let's see whether oh. they can actually challenge for these grubs. It is going to be the first one going over to Nongshim. They can just back away if they would like to, but they're indecisive. They don't quite know. Another walk up and smite there from Polo, and that is going to result in a kill. Mihail, though, going crazy, and Polo's going to be taken down. Morgan now back to Minina. Doesn't really want to do too much battle. Envy over the wall cannot hit anyone with no any fight. Button. This has been going for so long. Is now Fisher taking so much damage. The seismic shove is too good. Envy misses the mystic shot. Fisher going to get over the wall. Smote down by the Sejuani. What is it with summoner spells from downtown getting the kills in this game? I think Bro kind of won. I don't know. What about you? This is Cinema Atlas. We are Woo! watching it in 4 and right in front of our eyes. I thought you were going to say 4K, and you're like, oh, it's not quite that. <laughs> oh, <I'd>, OK. <laughs> so HD? Uh, what is nice here is that they have the teleport advantage. So they're up a member. The problem here is that all the damage goes into Sejuani and Leona. So all the engaged tools get used. They don't actually get Palu. They don't actually get Morgan. But Nongshim obviously able to take down one of the members and their health bars are still looking fine. So I, I don't, I'm not opposed to them then going for this. Then Brion, I think, have the right idea in trying to contest. The problem is that they need to be very respectful because if they do get on top of you and there's a teleport here coming in from Fisher, this should have been a disaster for Brion, but it somehow isn't. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Nongshim just over chases. Uh, Morgan is able to just get out. The ultimate from Mihal runs oh. out and then Hallway just finds a wonderful flick back. Uh, Fisher's ultimate does not hit the mark, and Atlas, this is this is what we this is what we wanted to see here today. Is Envy just frozen? He donates it to yeah. the Ether. I mean, Youngjae also just recently sent his to Narnia as well. Makes a lot of sense. Glacial prison, Narnia, same yeah. kind of vibes there. It's pretty uh -huh. cold through that uh, that that cupboard wardrobe, whatever you'd like to call it. And Nongshim, I think, just gathering themselves to look to start up this dragon. That will be their second of the game. We'll have to have a look uh, at what our soul is going to be. Likely, it's a Chemtech soul. That's sad, Atlas. If you have these type of messy fights, Nongshim's fighting. Okay, they have Senna, they have Orn, 
they have Azir. They're, they're going to be feeling great. If you just get these type of messy front-to-back situations 10, 15 minutes from now, oh, you're going to be feeling very, very good about it. Uh, the problem is actually getting there. So I think these Drake takes are actually oh. quite big as, oh, big. man, finally. I knew I could trust the Saturday showdown to bring the clouds. Everyone going to be moving so much faster. But the main thing is just feeling so much better. It's a Vibes Dragon, and it feels great. As there's the steal away from Young Jay, MV going to pick up a red buff for himself as I, well. I was actually going to ask you, how does that make you feel? But you already took the wards right real out. Real good, makes so you feel real. You'll one. have to save it. You'll have to save it. We'll keep it, uh, keep it under consideration. Eclipse and Triforce done for the top laners. Jiu, I'm not sure how many souls he's currently sitting on. That's going to be one of the big things to look for. The other thing, and one of the big weaknesses of Orn. Uh, in the support role is that he doesn't get nearly as much experience. So I think Gio actually has had the right idea. Oh, oh boy. There's the wall. Pool Bay is just on a tear, man. He's going to look for the center here. She does go into the mist, but the seismic shove is still going to come on through. The pesky minion is very annoying, but they're still going to be able to get another one off the back end. Guga goes down. And Sylvie and Gio can actually defend here. The turret is very healthy, so it looks like that should be possible. And all right, rocks flying in, mystic shots flying past. Too much more to be found here by the bros. Still, message received. And oh. I'll look for the Rift Herald. I actually, this is a bit risky from Breon. Uh, no, she isn't going to actually contest this. But they actually had two waves crash inside. Yeah, no, I think they should. So they had two waves crash inside, and Gugor has TP. And this is a really big objective. Nongshim would really like to get this one. Yeah, they're going to say thanks for the leash here, as Morgan does have teleport available. And okay, now you want to take this, and then yeah. as soon as possible, it's clearly not contested. Yeah, Meow is looking for the TP. And there you go, will TP towards the bot side. Make sure that the turret does not fall. Still, big beating, but I think a win for Nongshim nonetheless. Yep, not too bad. Going to well, be able to walk on over and secure it. They did sacrifice Gugur, but yeah. not the end of the world. Could have been worse, because they could have just lost the Rift Herald as well, and then that would have been very tragic. As yet, not a lot of battle cooldowns. Of course, a lot oh, of them were utilized oh, in this oh, moment. Oh, uh, So you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can actually break the Talia wall yeah. by eating into it. But he <laughs> eat the, the actual wall. That one didn't break, unsurprisingly. So it uh, didn't end up working out. Owen's going to need a buff. We're going to need him to be able to break down all of the walls. That'd be so dope. Yeah. And you just break, it, break down the wall in the alcove and just fall off. Wow. Finally get rid of some of the And then the dragon parts. catches you because you know the dragon like flies oh, past I get all it. the time. Yeah. yeah. And then you can do compositions that you know don't actually have any dashes over walls. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. This okay. would be a cool feature, uh -huh. right? On each alcove, yes. right? You can, if you have a champion that can break walls, you can then jump out of the wall and be the dragon catches you and it sort of teleports you to the dragon pit. And the dragon sort of does its animation as it comes in with you on its back. So it's and then a, you're in the dragon pit. It's it's a, it's a Mordor Eagle situation. Yeah, I mean, it's basically Hexgate, but... From the alcove. But from the alcoves. You can do either of them. The dragon just comes, picks you up. Yeah, I love it. I, yeah, I think that, we're going to have to we're gonna have to get that in the game. Mm. I'll have a chat to Matt um, later on. We'll figure it out. Uh, Surely adding more hex gates to the game won't backfire, right? Yeah, yeah, but this way the hex gates are not reliant on a dragon soul. They're in every single game. But also they are reliant on you having like an Orn or someone with a, a terrain destruction. Oh, because you need to actually Because you it need down. to break down the back of the Alco. Okay, but it's, isn't it like how many terrain destructors are there? I mean, there's Orn, there's one other, I think, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Because I know Poppy uses terrain, but she doesn't destroy it. Yeah, there's a few. May oh, maybe if Poppy slams someone into the wall, well, like breaks this is, as well. This is what you've got to do, though, because now as you know, as we release more and more champions, okay, we're, we're going to be distracted by the video game once again. As now Bullbait could be in trouble. There's the flash ulti from Sylvie to hold him in position. Heroic charge is still going to be there. He does have the Seraphs. He's going to flash. Dawning Shadow misses. He's fine. Why did we ever think that he was going to go down? It was always going to be okay. There's a flash. Solar flare. Polu is a madman today and will be the one to pick up the kill on Amiha. Battle Leona. Private Paulu reporting for duty, shows up in the side lane, and Breon win the play. Miao ends up going down, and on the other end, 
They're not able to actually take down Pulbe. You think you can flank him? The man oh, no. who invented flanking. He was flanking you the whole time. No and way. the back's going to get stopped there, of course. On award. It's not going to feel great. Top and of the morning. Atlas right now. Breon. Wait. Currently. He just got hit by a stray boomerang. It's and a, slowed down. It's a 5,000 gold lead, Atlas. O only Atlas and Degon believe in the bros. I know. And right now, in this first game at least, it's looking good as we do see. Now, I mean, the 1v1, you'd probably survive. I don't think you're winning against Maganar, but the moment Polo shows up, nicely done there. Good CC chain. And because we also see a small rotation over from Gugur, it doesn't actually end up working out, which is more mid lane. Uh, the inner damage. going down, like, it's oh, I know. four turrets. I know. And now, all that we need is Breon. Wait, wait. Not to chill. I don't, no, no relaxing, Breon. Keep I'm... the guard, keep that pedal pushed down, okay? To the metal. Yes. As it were. I want to see Madman. High this Octane game. Bro Gaming. You are cloud sold up. Oh, don't yeah. get, well, you're not yet, but you will be. Quadra Cloud? The speed up. Because you say that when they need to keep their pedal on the metal. They're not going Actually, to. Actually, I but really, they could get I four really clouds. don't think this game should get to four clouds. Actually, I think it should win before that. Oh, no, 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 no. no Atlas, four Atlas, clouds. Atlas, Atlas, Atlas. If it gets to four clouds, like just by passive gold generation, <laughs> Fisher and you are going to have like a good Where's amount of Where's your cage's items. lucky pick, man? <laughs> uh, heart of gold. There's a reason why it was named that, you know? I miss Harder. Oh, do I really? Do we? I don't know. I mean, Poppy's in the game, reminding you just how completely awful that item was in the lane swap meta where you build as many of them as possible until you could afford a Trinity Force and maybe play the game in 70 minutes. Ah, League of Legends. Good times. Good times indeed. As we do have uh, the vision line being pushed forward. Honestly, Bro is playing a great macro game. They really are keeping things in order. But. I do think that their ability to recognize when they're way stronger than their opposition is somewhat hindered. Don't know what by, otherwise I would have told them and then they would have fixed it. Uh, it's actually, Rift Herald is going to go on a merry jaunt here. It's and, actually, oh, Jonah uh, Strong, we don't need to watch Morgan. We need okay. to just watch the Rift Herald. I just want to watch <laughs> Shelly walk. Uh, it's actually a really good commentary here by Brian on, on how memories can weigh you down in life. Oh. Yeah, because if you have bad memories and you carry with those as you go. Is there anything that you want to talk about? No, I mean, we're talking about how it makes you feel. <laughs> Not me, Atlas. No, it's okay. But it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Joe, the, the key point, though, is that it actually is a real thing, and a lot of players have talked about this. Not just in the LCK, but in other regions and sports in general, is that losing makes you so much worse at the game because you start to second guess yourself. Yeah. And you have to have that confidence, which is why a win can be so incredibly important. And why this match, as much as we're having fun with it, does really matter for these two teams because. Especially, bro, because at least Nongshim, they have had their taste of victory they for have. the season. Yeah. And it's definitely not enough, but it's, it's something. And Breon. It's quite close, but huh. no cigar. It's interesting because we were talking about the fact that Bro were able to take the game off T1. And I think that that has probably given them a whole lot uh, of, of extra confidence moving into this game because it's not even necessarily you have to win a series. Even just winning a game is going to be helping out. And especially when you can justify it by saying it's a win against T1 as well, which would be even more important. So you can see Bro utilizing that momentum here as they do a lot of clearing out minion waves. And that vision line that we said was pushed up has now <laughs> dissipated. And, and, and we're settling in. We're settling in for a wait for a dragon. The Baron's up, but oh, Baron, don't need, it does a lot of damage. I don't think we need to consider the Baron until 58 minutes and 12 seconds. Uh, in Baron is scary, game. Atlas. Yeah, no, 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 very scary. Especially now with all the extra hands and stuff. It's, uh, it's just real. It's real weird. So don't go near there. We'll just wait for these nice drakes. As Sylvie's going to deny that. Wall is put up. That is a nope wall, everyone. That wall says nope. I'm oh, fighting. There we go, Gugger. Hitting level 13. Will not actually start giving out upgrades. This is a good good trap here by Breon. The problem is that No Shame is not falling for it. So yeah. what they're looking, they, they've completely choked out the vision here. And I'm pretty sure the ward in the pit is also being cancelled by the pink. So they don't oh, have oh, anything. Morgan finds a boulder and then walks away. That's my boy. 
I, I don't know about Gugur going Koenig Rooker, and I think he'd much rather just go Warmogs. Like, I know you get extra resistances as Orn, but I feel like Warmogs in his current state is really strong. And it also allows you to take the poke better than the shield from yeah. Koenig does. It's a bit weird. I would have liked, uh, liked Warmog, especially just because you can walk up and then walk back again. What is uh, happening? Oh. oh my god, that damage. Stop in the so back. What is happening now is that Nongshim are being lulled into a false sense of security. Or a false sense of where scaling. When well, they, they are. What you don't understand is the bro oh, the team that is scaling. See that? That yeah. right there? That's nerves. Yeah, they don't know. They have zero vision. Baron's also scary. The problem is that Brian is not u <laughs> using this fact. To, to actually start the objective, which they should. Brian, you should start up Baron because you're you're really far ahead. You're very strong. You just got your free item spike. Envy's pop in. Oh, oh, Ward goes over, shifting sands. Young Jay flashes away, gets in there, delivers a prison and just flashes away. Oh, there is a lot of fear as they Morgan- They really need to take a fight. Oh, this is what they yeah, do. They're gonna, they're gonna they get do the weird trade. stuff and flash around and then Morgan gets the work done as Jiwoo gets the big Raptor early smite there from Young Jay. But that is to lure them into a false sense of they're going to win a 50 50 on a Baron fight, right? Yeah, but this is, Atlas, this is a second dragon. It's, as I was saying, I, I want to repeat that. Yep. I do not think Brion should get four Cloud Drakes. Oh, this don't talk about shoulds in my Saturday showdown, okay? <laughs> don't you talk about shoulds. Don't pretend Sorry. to understand or oh. to know better. True Shot Barrage going to connect onto Jiwoo. And now if Bro can actually, like, fight in this instance, you know, before they just get healed up, is that's what they're going to try and do, is Sylvie does get the heroic charge onto Pool Bay, and now the ram comes in. There's the knockup, but it's onto Pool Bay. Oh, sorry, onto Polo, who just does not care about it whatsoever. Morgan, oh, he knew that his team was not actually going to fight. Check and me. so he is just going to take an inhibitor turret. I don't know whether it's an inhibitor from this angle as Bro. Oh my god. They use the distraction of the Gnar taking down the base to just take the Baron. Oh, they do know. We see the things go down. Yeah, this is also taking a really player. long time. Uh, it, it really is. Sylvie is there. On that Sylvie, get into the pit. There okay, are so still now two TPs available. Well, that is uh, going to be Envy over the wall. There is the ultimate. The and it's a flip, and it's won by Sylvie. He will die for it, but he'll be typing worth in all chat. And bro, they're just going to have to walk away. <laughs> Maybe the foreshadowing the, of no, no, this no. fighting the Raptor was the perhaps the not lesson, a bait. The lesson is not we shouldn't have done Baron. I want to be very clear about that. I think the lesson was you should have smoked Baron better. I, 115. Not the worst, but not okay, the best. Okay, no, 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 but again, like, the, Jong Ye losing the smite, obviously, it's a, it's a pure 50-50. That's not yeah. the issue. The issue is that if they, you have... Let's watch out. What about this solar flare for the slow, Jiwoo? Is the shield of Daybreak going to come in? The answer is... Oh, nice cleanse. That's the answer. Seismic Shove going to push Guga back. Polo is very, very low, and now the ram has been called, and he will... Be fine. Doesn't need to go back to the shop whatsoever. As Envy's gonna have to flash to get out of the way. Another seismic shove is good. On to Guga, who's pretty tanky. And Bro haven't really taken that much damage. Nongshim taken some damage, but otherwise the Phalanx hasn't really been dented too much. Oh, the problem here for Breon is that they have so much standing gold. And the moment these turrets fall, the gold is basically gonna be even between the two. Oh yeah. Jiu, he has actually had uh, 81 souls right now. Oh, and... there's the Glacial Prison, though. Jiu looking for that backline. Fisher can't get in. And there goes Sylvie. Trisha Barrage would have hit. We'll give him benefit of the doubt for that one. As Morgan's flashing over the Shereman walls. And it is all crumbling down. Fisher just having to get out of there, but I, he has to dodge the house. Okay. As it turns out, you can dodge a. If you can dodge a house, you can dodge a. Go into the death chamber. Uh, there was a dodgeball reference there. I didn't quite get there. As Bro are going to turn the tides on the stolen Baron, they'll take the inner turret down in this mid lane. Bottom outer does fall, but if that's all they're going to get, then it's um it's not looking like a positive Red Bull Baron power play. And in fact, it is negative 90 gold. Which but is it, going to but it, it stalls the game, and that's really all it had to do. And that's—is that enough? I, 
again, I want Breon to win, right? Like, they've struggled so much. Yeah. It's a very important match. And I mean, really, like these... we, we, just, we just want the best League of Legends out of these two teams possible, right? Ultimately, that's what it is. Oh, well, yeah, Gio trying his best, uh, but probably sh if he just leaves, I don't think he actually lives, but maybe he gets an extra summoner out of it. Uh, without Gugger there, Noshim needs to be very respectful because of they getting itched on. Again, everyone on Brian is very fed. So the moment that anyone comes in, you will just die in a very short amount of time. There's Cleaver, uh, there's just a lot of burst available. Full Bay has his Leandries as well. So it, it, it's a tough ask for anyone on Nongshim that isn't Gugger to take all huh? that and be okay. Do you know whether Fisher really wanted his Void Staff upgraded? Yeah, no. I feel like it's not the greatest no. of upgrades. And it's not Mythics anymore. You have to have your item in the correct slot so that you upgrade the, the correct so item. I, Nash's is probably the right choice. Yeah, it's, right? it's Nash's or I imagine Death Cap is still very good. Is yeah, as all right. We find the prison on to the center. In goes Polo. Of course, he finds that Envy. Gets a good angle. The disengage does come in, but it's a little bit late. They're not able to save the center. And now there's barely any damage as Fisher is the only one, but he's taken boomerangs to the noggin. The steadfast presence of Sylvie is exactly that. But there goes Gugger. He's going to get thrown back. Young Jay spends a little bit of a breather time in the brush. The Gugger nowhere that he can go. The Sun Disc not going to be doing anything. Envy wasn't even there. As there's the teleport ward set up by Fisher. Isn't a flash? He's dead. Yeah. Well, he should be. It's Sylvie moving on down as well. Envy's going to take a little bit of time to go down, but they do manage to kill the AD carry. So it is two for one. In a turret falling on this top side, bro. Probably able to stay worth unless they start losing in a turret. Oh, and Sylvie can take the Drake. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. This is the real value for Nongshim. Oh, this is get the cancel. It would have been big. I don't know. With only Morgan having to be, I don't think they can contest this. <laughs> that means that that soul point for Breon, which I do think that they're going to be looking towards, is not going to come through. And man, Yongjae, what an ultimate there. Jiu basically walks into it, ends up without a summon, is getting taken out immediately, really struggling on this Senna. And then there's Sylvie. Really big ultimate because of Sejuani's there right from the get-go. It'll and be a disaster. But this stall... Envy teleporting mid lane. Oh, I, okay, so that in of itself... Like, I'm like I, I guess it makes sense because you want to push in side lane while your team is is, uh, is winning. Because the, they win the fight top anyway, right? But then, yeah, being this far up and the teleport ward ends up being... Uh, even without the teleport ward, like, he would have died. Yeah. Uh, he was just not in a good position. And as you say... TP definitely... And the, 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 the I, timing is the rough one, right? Because you do want to be picking up these Drakes. Drake does go over to Nongshim here. So now, like you say, Soul Point collected. 7,000 gold is still the lead. Bro, still massive in this they game. They should still win, Atlas. That they, they should take the next Nash. Yes. Nongshim shouldn't be allowed to walk up, and then you can just march into the base. And particularly, I think, playing around Pool Bay, Morgan and Envy, all of them are so strong. Four items here for Morgan. Pool yeah. Bay is about to hit his uh, his magic penetration item. Envy sitting on three and a half as well. But if you if you give this another, like, another Baron goes over or another Drake goes up, like, Nongshim is actually going to get to the point where the gold lead is... The gold lead already isn't actually this big. Like, the Orn items make a huge difference. Yeah, they do. And there's already a couple of them on the carries here so far. Morgan hopping towards Mihail, who does press his World Ender button. He's getting so much of his health bar back, but that is going to be Morgan pushed away. Sterex helping him stay alive. Speaking of staying alive, Jiwu now with his Piercing Darkness. Pretty high level of souls. Yeah, this is really low cooldown on Mihail's ult. And this actually, Morgan takes so much damage before he goes into Mega. So it's actually quite hard for him. Should still be able to get the inhib. Yep. Because uh, turrets defending, I think Mihao can do. Uh, trying to win one building as Minion with Flash, definitely not happening. So that is going to be in hip taken. Nongshim are going to start off the Baron, yeah, though. Yeah, they want to force a TP out of Morgan here. We'll see whether they can do that, because of course, Mihao is there. So it's an honest 4v4 and pull bait. He can find the wall angle, he can get themselves in there. They don't have a lot of information, but now they do. In goes the Talia. The Keeper's Verdict does come out. That is going to be the Baron, but now Morgan looking for the backline. Fisher has already taken down Polo, but is he going to die for it? The answer is not quite yet, at least. And does manage to shift the sands, but there's the crush. 
No flashing for you. The Lord has sunk his teeth in. But finally, Mihail is looking for the revenge and he will get it. Envy trying to hit some of these Mystic shots, connects a few onto Jiwu as Sylvie fighting with Pool Bay. But they get on top of Envy and he is just a paperweight. And Nongshim, they get themselves barren. They keep a couple alive. They lose an inhib. And it was kind of even, I guess. Still gold moving back in Nongshim's favor. Again, Nongshim, if they can just keep dragging out this game, Atlas, that's all they're looking to do. And I actually love this call. It's either calling the bluff of saying, guys, our disengage is actually really good between the Orn, between the Poppy, it's so hard, and that ult, absolutely pivotal. Denies the 50-50, and then here, things get messy. Morgan is really trying to make this one work. Nongshim's team fighting is very disjointed. Uh, the fact that Fisher also, the ult, like, tries... The the wall. Yeah, and also, uh, he tried to, like, just run away from Morgan. It's fine, you don't have to try and auto him <laughs> uh, in the fight. But fortunately here for Nongshim, like, both Miao and Jiu are doing great in this fight, and he's unable to really make an impact. And it is an even trade, but with the Baron going over to Nongshim. And again, I will, I'm going to keep reiterating this. I feel like if they can just... Keep going like this. Like the gold right now, it's actually even with the yeah with the ornaments coming through with the Senna souls currently approaching 110. But that's what these games are about. This you is actually what Bro is about. One almost one every fight, fight is honest and even. <laughs> one team fight win, Brian, and the, the bot lane highway is open. Yep. The Nexus is right there. Well, they have to get for the turrets, but that's not a lot. They do have some uh, empowered minions moving towards this outer turret in the mid lane. Like you were talking about, though, bit of a distraction in the bottom lane as there are super creeps aplenty. And 13 seconds on this Cloud Drake. This time, no real kerfuffles as Mihail gets over the wall. Full Bay throws rocks at him. World Ender used very early. Maybe an opportunity. Oh, look at that wave. Someone has to catch that. Yeah, they do. There are so many supers. As once again, they just evict Young Jay. True Shot Barrage flies forward. That's going to be Cloud Soul coming in. Cougar just with the get out of here ram. Oh, Still, I mean, the they're going to have to teleport to get towards this. Uh, in fact, there's two Can they get teleports. a cancel? Well, Solar Flare comes in. Yeah, Cougar. Unfortunately for him, the teleport is not fast enough. And he is going to get uh, yeah, taken out. Just try and push on that wave. I think you just go for it. Yeah. This might be the last window that you get. So, now picked up for Nongshim. I, I think Brian have to send it. This is the one. This is the opportunity. No real frontline remains. Only Poppy who has gone for mostly support items. Oh, Brian. It doesn't look at like they're going to give it a go. No. They don't want to risk it. And that is in line with the bro philosophy, but... They've got an appointment in five minutes' time. <laughs> it's the Elder Flip. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, you you best believe it. But you're playing it to Poppy. Oh, yeah, but there's no way he does it three times in a row. Or four times in a row if he does it with the next Baron as well. It's up in two and a half minutes. There's too much on the calendar to be winning if, the game if, now. If Nongshim win, is it actually a Sylvie vote? That can't be right. Oh, I probably. Oh, would you <laughs> isn't it abstain angle? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a G removal <laughs> hanging in there. Honestly, you know what? A BL, BL vote's not a bad shout. Man has been having a solid Aatrox game. I, uh, what? I mean, it's, as a I say say that. it's a Sylvie angle. It's a zero four Sylvie angle. Is Mihail Solar Flare going to come on through? Shield of Daybreak is there. The rest of the team are going to turn up. The seismic shop is too good. As once again they throw away. This Sejuani, but top laner for support. I think they probably take that as now Youngjay. He is allowed to come back. That's a big win, because that's going to line up nicely. The downside for Brian is that Mihal does have his teleport available, so Baron just a little bit too late to the party. Yeah, I mean, it was just fun to press the buttons. I don't think they really <laughs> wanted to do anything, like I said, four minutes on the clock. Oh. You know how in the in, in the last series had a bit of false advertising. We were going in saying, "Guys, it's going to be amazing Saturday showdown. Yeah. It's going to be a free game." It was a quick 2-0. Yeah. But this series, Atlas, this is this is what it says on the tin. This is Fast and Furious. This is oh, Transformers. Yeah. This is Michael Bay. Absolutely. And it's look at the explosions. I know. There's so many explosions. This is peak League of Legends. 
And I don't think anyone really wants to believe it. You might not like it. No. But this is what it looks like. And it's beautiful. And I think if you really, if you have the, the correct appreciation, it really is just beautiful. Just like Michael Bayfield. <laughs> <laughs> the man has a very specific po uh, point of view of artistry. We're 38 minutes in, and Oxum have one turret, Atlas! Uh-huh. One! And the Weaver's Wall comes on through. It. Oh, Did yeah, it. Guga figured it out. And I think knew it the whole time, just didn't quite manage to get it to work in that last fight where we called him out for it. And all right, Fisher does a damage to Polo, who presses W and ignores damage. Guga's walking really fast, as we know. Cloud Soul, very valuable. Allows you to walk very fast. They are walking in circles, which is not allowing them to traverse a lot of distance at this point. But that's fine. Morgan looking for the, for the flank angle. And he's stacking up the Naba. They just let him walk in. It's like they barely even noticed. True Shot Barrage is going to hit almost the something. Focus good, Atlas. Kind of is. Still be looking for an angle here. As the battle for the Crab is continuing. Morgan distracted by a minion wave. Mahail does have a bigger health bar than the Nah. Let's see what actually happens here as the wallop is actually going to connect. Trying to cast on multiple angles is getting a little bit confusing here as Envy flashing out of the way of the Ram. They're doing a lot of damage to Polo and now Mihail gets the angle. Envy over the wall gets out of the way, but he's still going to be dead. And now the Nongshim Hammer has fallen on top of the bros. They just needed you to wait another minute and a half. But instead, the Noodle Boys, they're going to push through a large amount of structural stuff and just, I think, win this game now. No turret, no problem. They were just leaving them stand because they knew that there would be no opposition as late into the game. Bonchim, get to the 40-minute mark. That the was Pulbe's first death. Yeah, I don't think Pulbe was a problem with this one, Atlas. No, I, I don't think so either. I think it's, um, it's unfortunately... A sense of dread within Breon. Well, let's see. There is one Nexus turret and perhaps a dream. But maybe it's a nightmare unless Morgan could be the hero. Fisher says no. Finds an Empress Divide that's really good here at the very end. And the Nexus will be taken. The Noodles will reign supreme. And Bro, once again, not quite able to get there. That, that's, a, that's a heartbreaker, Atlas. Yeah. I gotta say, and I love the Noodle Boys. I'm happy to see them win. That, that's probably the, the least KDA vote that I've ever thrown out <laughs> in my entire <laughs> life. I was gonna put it out there. Uh, I, if you know, if, if Miao ends up getting it, I'd, I'd be more than happy to as well. I think he did have a, a, a solid performance. I mean, there I, is no wrong vote because there's no, not, no real right vote. I, this, this to me, this, this is, this is kind of. This is a team we're losing a game, no, not a team winning a game. We're, we're laughing. We're laughing because it hurts. Yeah. Because Breon was in a prime position. Like Paul Bay had played a great individual game. Young Jay was everywhere where he needed to be. Polu's early game was impeccable. Yeah, it was amazing. Look at this. And look at the amount of damage Envy did. Oh, but in Atlas. every team fight, did basically nothing. He died first. Yeah. So it's like. You can have all of these things that look good on the graphs, and then you're looking at the graphs and you're like, but what went wrong? And it's in these fights, it's being on the same page and playing together that uh, the bros really weren't managing to do. But we'll see whether they can fix that moving into game number two. It is break time now, then the space is going to break down that magnificent game. We'll see you for game two.
Instead, you go in knowing what's going to happen, and uh, it's not going to be a shock or anything like that to the players. So. Uh, that's what they've decided to do. Because honestly, if I was to base it on performance, I would have left Bull Bay in. Um, I know yeah, yeah, like, Wolf was a bit uh, critical about the uh, the walls, but I think that his shoves were brilliant, his positioning was fantastic, and the way that him and Polo played together was uh, was really good to see. Yeah, obviously, uh, preaching to the choir to me when it comes to uh, yeah. singing Bull Bay's praises. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I think that this was a premeditated set. Because that makes the most sense, uh, although Envy, obviously, after that game, should definitely, even for his own sake, be subbed. And Karis did have a wonderful performance last time when he was subbed in against T1. The drafts, not looking too different just yet. And that Sejuani Pryo was something that teams believe so strongly in. I, yeah. I think Sejuani's good, but Renekton? I don't know if it really warns that level. So the Renekton was banned in game number one, yeah. and it is. Yeah. So they, they just moved the order of Tristana and Renekton, so it's not a salty run back entirely. Uh, although this is almost definitely Sejuani. I think Young Jay was still fine, even if his smite button didn't work. But smite is the same no matter which champion you play. Uh, and so that uh, and is not going to be fixed. And he was great. Jump. Like, had a couple of great uh, great ganks, a lot of early impact. The Karis adjustment. There we go. I almost wrote in Karis instead of Azir. Um, because it is, it's just, it's just Karis. We okay. are, we are so back on the NAR train, huh? Uh huh. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I know that this is the, the current flavor. I'm not a NAR Sejuani believer, Atlas. I feel like the NAR. Any Lord Pirates? That's twist of fate. That would be interesting. Young Jay, I do really like the the Zin Zhao angle. Oh, same. Yeah, I just think sure. that the Bros play around Zin really well. See if it comes through. A lot of displacement here for OK Member already. And the school, like, yeah. You can't really go Cassante I just, just because of the power of the NAR. The GP's problem is just. I like that he the is, GP. No, I, 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 I do as well, but I think GP's problem is just that he is inherently a very volatile character that's also hard to get the most out of. And Breon might not want to take Ooh, the risk. Ooh, yeah, like the Yordle off. Yeah, I like this a lot more. Even though Cannon did obviously get hit on this patch, I do think that it is a matchup that you've always been able to rely on. Celestial Dragonfisher? With how that last game played out, going for Aso, I think, makes complete sense. I that... also think that going for Yone or something that can do something with Sejuani would be Oh, This is This works. It does. Does do something with Sejuani. That's, the ah, there, there we, we go. go. That's called listening to the stream. Love to see it. You're only going to be locked in here for Fisher. And honestly, normally you're basically relying on getting Ziggs for your comp to work. But Brion isn't actually going to have a tank. So I don't think you're as worried about going full AD as you would be otherwise. Because normally what happens is if you try to play this into like Cassante, I don't know, Cassante Maokai, Cassante Sejuani and you go full AD, they're going to build armor, and you're never, ever going to kill them. Yeah, but that's, that's not going to be the case this time around. They should ban Ziggs, though, because Ziggs, like, add Ziggs to this composition, and oh my god. Well, uh, it's I, not... I, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to rain on your parade or anything like that. The Ziggs, obviously, going to be banned away, but I reckon it's Polo Cannon. You wait for it. It's Callista Orn locked in. The old Gorilla Special, Cannon Support going to be coming through, and then they get that full tank, and then they're like, ha, huh, you're full AD. Checkmate. Well, leave in the middle who is checkmated by, <laughs> by that by that statement. As, uh, we do get the ban on the MF. actually really like this uh, MF ban. We saw Samber have a really good game on it. You already have a lot of setup for the big Wombo Combo Ultimate. Okay, so they you ban Kai'Sa, 
So they assume that he's probably going to play Zeri then? Yeah, the Kai'Sa just because it's another AP uh, bot lane champion. I, yeah, I guess. But then he can go either Ezreal or Zeri. See what, and uh, then Gugger can last pick. Yeah, I think Ezreal makes complete sense. Ezreal's fine here. Uh, I would go Leona, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't just uh, pick away the Leona. Of course, Polo, very happy to play that one once again. I think he had a good performance on the champion as well. Samba. Zeri, Leona. Jumping on the Zeri. Zeri, Rakan. Okay. I'm okay with it. Makes sense. Unless Gugger pulls out the Poppy support, I do think that that is going to be just... Like, Leona's fine. Uh, it makes a lot of sense into the comp. I'm like triple checking, like, is it not banned? Brad? Oh, but they're quite mobile, though. Hmm. I like it into Rakan. It's a good angle. It does mean that there is no uh, ability to follow up on That's Permafrost, yeah, and I like the go. Alistair. Even though Ezreal Alistair just, you know, from past uh, examples of it, does make me squirm a little. Um, at the moment, Ezreal is in such a good position in the laning phase that you can kind of make up for the lack of any presence that Alistair has early on. I think the, the composition works. I don't like Na uh, Sejuani at all. I never have. Um, but we have seen it work in a lot of cases, even if it is an optimal synergy. Yeah, the, two. The, the Yone makes, I think, a big difference in how I look at this draft. It's a matchup that shouldn't really get bullied. Obviously, you're going to get shoved in, but shouldn't be bullied too much. The one downside is that Nongshima are again going to be looking at a lot of losing lanes. Spot lane is better this time around, but the other lanes are definitely going to struggle. Both top and mid. For Breon, this composition should mean that you're a lot more proactive. The downside is that I do we trust Breon to actually execute a composition? I think it's harder to play, right? You need setup for the cannon. Yeah. Can't just run in. Well, I actually, given how last game played out, maybe he can. But realistically, he shouldn't be able to just run in. So the team fighting from Brion is going to have to be a lot better than it was last time around. And they don't have a front line. They have a lot of engage, but no front line. So we'll see how they're able to make that work. As long as they keep the good parts and actually do stuff, Atlas, I think they can bring this to a game free. The early game was definitely fantastic in game number one. Let's just hope that it ends after the good early game instead of them not really doing anything and then losing the game. And Young Jay going to have to find that smite button. Just have to see how it goes. Desperate for three games as we head towards game number two. All right, realistically, this is Bro with their backs against the wall. It's the last chance for them to find a win before round two starts as Guga already slapped around here by the Rakan. Apollo going to notice that there aren't any wards, so joke's on him. Man. It's, it's, it's DK next, Atlas. And I know DK just got mercilessly swept by Gen G, but does that, does that mean it? No, no, it doesn't mean anything. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Samver will take what I imagine was just some early Q autos from Chiu, so... I'm going to go back. I think that, um, yeah, the upper limit of these two teams, from what they've demonstrated so far, is stealing wins off DRX and BNK. Yes, I would agree. That's that's the upper limit. Until we see some uh, sweeping changes it is going to create something better for the team. As Karis definitely looked much better in the match against T1. I think uh, the break was really, really good for this guy. And... We'll just have to see whether that is going to continue moving into this game because it's consistency for Karis that does need to, to come through, right? Uh, can't just be that one-off performance because we knew, like, this guy is capable of some great things. League of Legends, fortunately, just can't do it um, on a dime, right? So hasn't been able to consistently string it together. The hype was there initially, but wasn't able to deliver on it too much. Fish are actually playing this uh, lane pretty aggressive, fishing for some... Early Q freeze. I see what so you did giving there. Giving up a yeah, yeah, giving up a couple of wasn't even on purpose. A oh couple of minions to get some harass in, and I I don't think we're going to see any volatility in these lanes. And really outside the top, I don't feel like the lanes are super volatile. There's a lot of innate safety for both bot and mid. So maybe Young Jay can find Sylvie, but this is I think one of the most underrated parts of Sejuani. It's like look at her clear speed. 
Look look at yeah. the fact that Sylvie is already just chewing. Or, uh, it's like a camp and a half ahead. Like that's a really big deal here early on. It's one of the reasons why Sejuani is so highly prioritized because I remember, and we saw this in the previous game as well, in the previous series rather, eventually champions like Nidalee are going to take over, right? But it used to be that Nidalee could just invade Sejuani during her first clear and live in her jungle. And Sejuani never got to be able to play the game, and that's just not really the case anymore. And I feel like it should be. I yeah. Like Sejuani blind B1 every single game. Like, I don't know if it's if it's the AP junglers. I don't know if we're bringing, bringing back the troll. Like, something's got to be Ooh. found. But I, I don't think Trundle is a, a real champion, unfortunately. But, like, that's... He that's... was a top laner for a bit, and that was fun. Yeah. Not really here, though. No, I like Trundle. He's, he's, he's so dumb. He's just, you know, he just stands there and autos you. Yeah, and and eats a bit. Mm, you know? Yeah, takes a bite. Yeah, he's got a big old club. But sometimes, just want to nom. Uh, it's not going to be in this game. Karis doing a decent job here. Just uh, chilling as Polo's making his way up. There is no unbound soul available, and now the Conquering Sands comes in. Fisher not really needing to invest too much, but uh, a bit of space being gained here by Karis in the lane. I guess that is good. Might be able to stack up a wave and get a decent crash down as Sylvie sees the Rakan, who just gets himself out of there. Young Jay's jungle is going to be protected for the moment. Sylvie already got a back in. Not the case for Young Jay. Young Jay looks like he's just going to start his second clear, so just power leveling 2 6. Big spike for the Zinza. Obviously, wins the 1v1 pretty handily, but his lanes are not that great. A lot of CC, but damage early on is going to be a little bit lacking. Yeah. Having a check in as far as CS numbers are concerned. Top lane going very well for Bro at the minute. Kennen, uh, not necessarily the best of the counter picks for the NAR, but has certainly been one that's been employed in the past. Uh, this one is going to be the AP variety we've seen. I believe on hit Kennen actually have the best win rate. Yeah, we did. That was that was fun. I think it was Zeus that picked that. Yep. I, I liked seeing it. It was it was fun. I won PTA and the whole deal. It's yeah, uh, I, not as not as much longevity, you could no. say. In well, the you know, I think German is a great item. In the in the one v one, you're always going to be feeling great. In in any other situation, definitely not the case. Does mean that we do see a sizable CS advantage here. As inferior like this from Sylvie, you want to play towards your Yone. Karis does have flash. Might have to use it here. Yeah, shifts the sands. Oh, very nice drifting nice. there from the man. Gets himself out. As Nah back underneath the turret here for Morgan, who will be able to get the lightning rush and avoids Ooh. the boomerang. So good trade for yeah. Mihail. Yeah, if the boomerang hits him, that would have been a real disaster. As oh, if that shuriken hits him, then it might have been a big disaster. It's just two yordles with low health. I'm just going to give both of them credit for good sidestepping. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's what we'll do. For everything that you say isn't good, there is something good being done on the other side. As Heba Pulverize does come in, great from Guga. As Balu getting out with the Battle Dance, also great from him. Yeah, if he gets stunned before he actually gets his uh, WI, I think he just dies pretty, um, Ooh. pretty straight up. Did have to heal, though, so that is a big win. So we have an early fight here, but as, you, uh, as you're ooing, Samver actually did rotate over, and I think Nongshim are reading it here. Does mean they should be able to get plates, but I don't think they can actually contest these. Yeah. Grubs. Samba was trying to stay out of vision, but is, is actually going to get spotted there by Apollo. That's uh, a lot of First Grub does go down. Yeah, you're Ooh, exactly Morgan, right. Morgan actually can swap here if they want to, to deny too much going over. And I think they have to, Yeah. because otherwise you're, you're missing a lot. Yeah, TP angle towards the bottom side. It is yeah. going to be a plate going down here. And it's not a cannon wave, so he does miss a few of the melee. Oh, I like this. Oh, boy. Set up for the dive. Yep. Uh, next wave should be coming in shortly. And Okay, well, Guger does give it away. Yeah, he needs to try and stop Morgan from just being able to walk it off because I think Morgan got full information about what was going on there. Nongshim pivot immediately to taking this Drake instead. But still, that's three grubs and Samba with some spare time on this top side. Not bad at all. This Polo will turn up. And now it is just the bottom lane cannon as Jiwoo tanks a turret shot. It is otherwise going to be A-OK. -okay. Young Jay up here. And yeah, Samper some spare time with this turret as well. Should be the plate. And there it is. Skates his way out. Plates come through. Looks like the lane swap is going to be cancelled. Drake's taken. 
It's a relatively even trade across the board. Ultimates are starting to become available now. This game, it feels a lot more deliberate than last game, Atlas. We're building up. Yeah. The suspense is being built right in front of our eyes. Yeah, that's the knock-up from uh, Fisher, but not really going to be able to find too much there as Conquering Sands moves the minions forward. And they disappear very quickly underneath the turret, as is the way with the good old Zia. So, yeah, 200 gold in it, something like that. Drake advantage there for Nongshim, like you were talking about. And it's not the very clear cut on and Senna do scale good into late game and then no. you can do win. Um, this is a lot more of an honest game of League of Legends, outside of the fact that Azir and the Zeri, I feel, are going to be very strong late, but a very I guess solid composition also does well. You know, like front to back in general, like you've got a big old tank, you've got Jiwoo there for the consistent damage uh, and the Na for the follow-up. Yeah. And it does make some sense here. So it's really big that they swapped out Envy because I feel like one of the big issues was that Envy in fights wasn't able to consistently get high damage output. I would favor Nongshim, not because of the champions, because of the context of the games. And as you're saying, like, I think the team fight comp when you have teams like this, is so important. Yeah. Well, if this was T1 on the side of Brin, I'd be like, oh man, they are they are vibing, right? Because these type of comps, I think, do take a lot of finesse. The raw power of Azir when he gets like his third item, right? when, he's, when he gets up to like Death Cap Void Staff levels of itemization, Samver obviously is going to become capable of doing so much more and damage so much quicker than the Ezreal does. But is that enough to offset the fact that Nongshim's comp is someone goes in, everyone else stands in front of the carries, and then, like, Jiu can just fire away, Fisher can dive with the rest of them. They have a lot of team fighting wombo combo as well. So we are looking for a play as soon as this Mega times out. Yeah, there is the Nah from Mahal. Throws some uh, houses around, and he's just wanting to clear this. Not having Get it. out. Yep. Not taking any risks. And uh, look at that, Polo was also on a roam. So yeah. Good read there by the young challenger player. Spidey senses were indeed tingling and tingling correctly. As Fisher just throws his sword around a little bit here, waving it, you could say. And the rest of Nongshim do just turn up, make sure that everything is actually okay. And it's not the fastest. It's a thinkings man. It, it's a, a, a thinking man gamings. Yeah. Yes. It's a smart game, big <laughs> well, brain game. That's 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 the cope, right? It's like this game is very old. Yep. Yeah, I was about to say with the soul bond, it's really hard to actually punish him. Um, but yeah, it's it's a type of game that if other people don't get it, you're like, man, these zoomers with their you know their TikTok attention span. Yeah. Uh, but the reality is, there's just not a whole lot happening in this game, <laughs> and it's not like a Gen G situation where nothing is happening and they're building a 2K gold lead. They're just but this, this isn't this a whole is, lot going on. Maybe this is dopamine oh. detox. That's what we're doing here. TP angle for Miha, obviously not available for Sanver, and they're just going to let the grubs go. So perfectly even spread of grubs. And Ooh. did you just say dopamine detox? I love yeah. that. It's the dopamine it's the detox. It's the League it's of beautiful. Legends equivalent of like going for a nice walk. Yeah. And it's a not nice like it's a bad walk. thing. It's just not overly stimulating. Yeah. Should you we know? adjust as well? No, no, no. Because no. it's late for a lot of our viewers and they would yeah. actually, <laughs> they would <laughs> actually pass out. Yeah. That's the way to guarantee continued viewership, though. You know, because oh, they pass can't out turn off the without stream. turning it off. Yeah. 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 Unless your roommate comes in because you're obviously like you're snoring too loud or something like that, and they're like, "What are you?" Doing? Actually, I don't. I don't think you could snore watching it. I think you would be lulled into a very deep and calming sense of sleep. Yeah, it'd in be like there straight no to REM. Yeah, straight like no you, snoring. Skip, not like me this morning. I had a dream about my teeth falling oh, out. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, just not good. And then apparently there's like a, a thing in Korea where they're like, "That's really that's like a really bad sign." Oh, and, like, I, it means that, like, my, my brother's going to break his arm or something like I, that I, if I, I had a brother and he had arms. Cool. As, all right, Polo going to look for a knockup on a Fisher, doesn't find it. Rebinds the soul. Spent a lot of time out there as Guga just wanted to give him some minions. That's going to be effective. The fish has actually been laning very effectively. Um, didn't mean to say effective twice, but it's fine. It's and, just uh, an effective use of limited vocabulary atlas to keep it precisely very clear and precise what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Not because I have a tendency to go a little bit flowery in my language, you know, be a bit uh -huh. too uh, too much. So which ones like rhododendrons? 
I'm not actually very well versed in English names of flowers because why would I have ever learned those? Wouldn't they be kind of similar in nah. some ways or no? So, sometimes, yeah, but sometimes not. What so about if I Daphne's? Say, if do you know Daphne's? No, no idea. If I say Zomabloom, what do you think that is? Uh, that sounds like a dance exercise at the gym that your <laughs> aunt could sign up for. It's Sunflower. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, I know that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go for a difficult plant name. Oh, okay, that, I, I appreciate that. It was still pretty difficult, though. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's just a hard language. Yeah, yeah. So are we going to collapse on the Geo here? That is Ezreal, so he should be completely fine. He's, he, they he's, they could have, but I mean, it's not about that at this stage. It's about trying to get a position message. around this dragon. The, the funniest part is Geo and Google are posturing, but Sylvie is topside. Oh, this is the latest first blood. Of course. Mm. Of course it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am gobsmacked. Breon, Young T is on a ward. <laughs> How late do you reckon we could go? Okay. 21 minutes. Are, oh, we doing the, are we doing this again? Are we involving everyone? Oh, yeah. We should probably do the over-under. All right. I'm going to go first. 21. 21 minutes? 21. I'm going to go... It's probably less. It's like probably like 16. Yeah, I think it's probably 16, 17, something about that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock in for fun. All right. I'm going to go... I'm gonna go 21. Max, uh, Jisun is 17. I'm going to go optimistic. So optimistic. I'm going to go 32. 32. Oh, my God. You're, you're breaking records. I'm br I wanted to break records, man. I, I believe you want a bro leave? I want a bro leave. Today is my day of bro leave, okay? You did predict them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just making sure that we get everyone's. Yeah, Yundo's at 19. Uh, Brandon Valdez, 1725. Yundo's okay. at 19. Digon is at 2059. Wolf 20 is. 2059. <laughs> Wolf is. Uh, yeah, he's gaming the system. <laughs> he's gaming Wolf is uh, 1645. All right. So, uh, uh, Chet, you can join as well. This is a fun little mini game that we're playing while this this is yeah. ongoing. And perhaps we could even get a gamba. You know, maybe maybe it's not about the prediction <laughs> I of don't, the outcome. I assume we have one for the actual game. You yeah, we have, do. You but can't like, have two. No, we could just cancel that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just pay it out. I mean, bro just play. Just take everyone the winner. It doesn't matter for everyone, pro players. Yeah, everyone's the winner. put it in anyway. Just give everyone the win. And, like, this is what we're playing the gamba for. And uh, we'll do it from there. I think that's the best way to do it. Maybe we could have we could set up a poll to see whether you guys think that that is the right thing to do. So do I can't believe we've had this us. entire discussion <laughs> and <laughs> nope. actually yeah. nothing has happened. <laughs> no, it's great. Uh, no turrets have fallen. There's been some plate action, but nothing major. Uh huh. It is a 1,000 gold lead for Bro, and the Drake is still there, just chilling, just hanging out as Fisher walks out of the brush. Oh no! Oh no, 15.45! Oh no, Fisher's fine. It's, it's totally fine. Is Youngjay fine? Is Youngjay, no, yeah. Youngjay's fine. He's totally fine. Trisha Barrage, is that fine? Oh, this, really is, fine? this is this is big for the 17 minute predictors because this means that they're gonna give up the Drake without oh. going in. Oh, but what about 32 minute predictors? Well, I mean, is it big for them? <laughs> Uh, no, because now they got two Drakes. Oh, no. Oh, no. What about 16-minute predictors? What about... Oh, he's got Unbound Soul. Gotta be... Oh. Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Atlas. How does it make you feel? Um, Come on. Get... Really uh, dive in. Really dive into it, Atlas. Well... We I have mean, time. In that moment, I did feel like a slight rush of like, man, there might be some action. Uh-huh. Um, oh, no. Wolf. Wolf. So the 1645... 16.45, 10 seconds away. Morgan, oh. he's on the dinner plate. Oh, the 17.15 oh, predictors. G-Sun, she might be in for it here as Morgan presses lightning oh. rush. No, uh oh, no and good night, Wolf. Wolf. Wolf is just a sad face now. No longer is he a prediction. Out of the running. Yeah. Oh, we have a Herald fight. Surely a Herald fight's gonna lead to some action, right? Well, I mean, Herald this is the fight moment. is generous. Herald fight is very generous. Oh, it's, it's, hap it's happening, Atlas. I can feel it. All right. Well, the Herald is fighting Sylvie. <laughs> um, it's, the Herald is now fighting Young J. Fisher is Bo fighting both, minions. Both mid laners have TP. Should be able to make it over very quickly. All right. As all oh, Brendan Veldas with 1725. Oh, 1725 looking good. G Sun's already done. Brendan's done now as well. True Shop Barrage is going to hit some people. 
Not gonna get too many results. Here's a teleport angle. The Lord might be able to find it. The quickness comes in. Polu's so incredibly low. Jiwu, and there it is, 1737. That's the latest first blood we've had in a really long time. As Karras, he airballs the ulti. That might mean that it's over. As Bro, they're still fighting back, and that's a big health bar for Morgan. Now Nongshim just looking for the resets. Karras is gonna get one. And Bro coming out ahead in the fight. They should be able to grab this Herald as well. And the flank there from the Lord coming up huge. Because Degon, one of our two Bro leavers here and on he the desk. And he gamed it. He gamed it as well. You are one second away from being closest, Chronicler. I mean, it's still Veldas. Oh. It, was set, it was closest to 17. Oh, do you have to be like the, the close? Ah. I, I guess it would be. No, isn't it? If you go over, then oh. you're ruined. Oh, well, then I won. Like prices, well, I right? guess Digon won. So we take a yeah, look. Yeah, Digon won. Yeah. Genuinely, really no, wait, well done there by Palu and Morgan. Right, Palu extends the play. Geo, it feels so safe, but he's not actually able to make it in time. And I think the fact that Fisher arrives to the fight this late is really rough. They should know this was going to happen, right? It's not a surprise that this fight is going to break out. Mihal Maganar arrives just a little bit too late. Exhaust has been picked up for Cannon, but wasn't used up until the point where the fight was already lost. Now, after last game, we know this doesn't mean anything, but it's still good to see Brion remain active in the face of uh, uh, undefeated or uh, well, undefeated in losing. Yeah, round robin. And so, just to confirm, you are not the winner. Uh, Yundo was in fact the winner. If we're gonna do the, if it goes over, then uh, you're definitely gonna lose. I, I think we give Yundo the win. I think we give Yundo the win. I think he's 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 earned a yep. win. Yeah, he was close without going over. Uh, I believe. So there we go. Yep, that's for real. It's a Yundo win. That's a Yundo win. And your prize will be in the mail. Uh, I haven't decided what that is yet, but it'll be in the mail, whatever it is. As now we're going to get the charge. That should be out of turret secured here for Bro. Not a lot of response. Nongshim do have two drakes to work with. There's also a Hextech Soul on the map. Because of the exhilaration felt throughout all of Korea during, during that game number one, Orcs was drawn out of the shadows to pay attention to this game, so we didn't get a Chemtech. The atmosphere is electric. It is. That's Absolutely why, uh, why Hextech electric. showed up. Uh huh. Jokes aside, if Nongshim win this next fight, if they even ju if they just get the dragon, as long as they don't lose Nash for it, I'm still gonna highly favor them in this game. That fight it looked good. We saw the power. Once Morgan gets onto the enemy backline, can be absolutely pivotal. And I was a little bit worried because he went for the dash cannon vibe mm. uh, of the cannon. We haven't necessarily seen as much of that more recently. A lot more going for like flat damage, trying to get in there. Yeah, or uh, he's going shadow going flame Andres. second though. Like I'm, I'm feeling good about that. Oh, no, I like it. Uh, and go Death Cap third. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no take backs. Yep. No yep, stopwatch. And then Void Staff fourth, you know? And then, yep. like, maybe you build an Arm Guard. But maybe. only then do you think about it. Then goes Young Jay. Taking control. Textbook play here. Big thing for Nongshim is going gonna, is gonna to be the management of the Narbar. How much poke can Jiu land? Oh, and also, what is Karras going to be able to buy? Because if it's an, if it's an Arm Guard on this back. Oh, nobody does it to two items spike. Both mid sitting on that now. All right, oh, that's there's the, the poke, teleport though. in. But Hannah Brush Control is there for Nongshim. Again, Brion, they really don't want to give this turret. Look at the flank angle from Morgan there. Does oh, get spotted. Yeah, 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 that's a really good trinket. And Mahail has a phenomenal Narbar to start this fight off as well. Samba already at about 50%, takes a house to the face as well, and that's generally a bad thing. As Youngjae gets in there, let's see whether the smite's going to work out. He gets it! The ulti's going to drag him out of there as well as the Empress Divide sweeps up the Yone! And now Morgan couldn't find a target because they were all dead! What a problem to have for the bros as they wipe them out! And Breon, they might even be able to turn that into a Baron if they want to run the risk. I don't know if they will. A risk, uh -oh. Chronicler! Never know with this team. <laughs> yes, you do. You always know with this team. What are you talking about? Well, okay. I guess they don't take the Baron. Yeah, uh, No, I, that's my bad. Don't I, be I, a silly Billy. I, I am a silly Billy Atlas. I want to take another look at that fight because Gio not able to have a big impact, but Fisher also going in so deep and it not working out. Uh, Meow. He actually he used a lot pulled of Jay out of the pit and kind of saved him as well, unfortunately. I yeah, as, as, as we take another look here. So the 50-50, that's not the end of the world, but the team fight needs to be won. So 
yeah, uh, as you're saying, kind of Yongjie doesn't oh. really bother, and then Miha also tried to kill Palu but didn't, and Jiu just died very unceremoniously. And the Ezreal struggle bus continues as Morgan might be in some Ooh. trouble here. Speaking of struggling, he's, uh, he's very dead. Really big time Oh, dead. that's a big shutdown as well. A lot of money over to the Nah. All right, and that was just after he completed those two items as well. Of course, doesn't really help him out when it's two versus one against some burly bodies. Karas though, man. Super sub coming in again. Oh, yep. Playing the fight out nicely. It's really big when you hit these spikes that you actually do the necessary damage, right? That you actually get a lot of DPS down. He did well in that fight. Samba as well, chasing down Sylvie here, as we can see. So a bit to look forward to here in this game, and that's what it's, what it's about. It's about looking forward to things that could be happening in the future. And we, we were rewarded for it uh, with uh, the first blood. Oh, that yeah, last this, fight, this, yeah, 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 it's I, not really much. No, especially looking at the amount of control that was available for Brion towards the top side. Can't be that far up pushing a wave, unfortunately, for Morgan. Imagine if it had have gotten to 32 minutes without a first blood. Wouldn't it have been cool? Uh, yeah, I would have loved it. Would have been a very remarkable thing to have happened. It w I would have remarked, like, a lot about it. A lot? Yeah, like... Lots of. I think in general you're remarking. a person that does a lot of. I do a fair bit of remarking. Remarking. Yeah. It's one of your favorite things. It's it's interesting because I do a lot of remarking, but I'm not very remarkable. I because it's like it's not remarkable well, that I I'm mean, remarking. I think by definition that's definitely not true. You have a, you know, you have a. Very well, maybe no, no, no. So the fact that I'm remarking isn't remarkable. Oh Even no, that I is your was job. To be remarkable. No, because that's your job. Yeah. Yeah, your job is to remark on stuff happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, obviously. Did you see all of that time go by while we were having that conversation? We got rid of a lot of time then. Really, one could say that all we're doing <laughs> is just biding our time, you know, in life. <laughs> True. And that's that's the beauty of it. And it just yeah. is what you do while biding that time that matters. And if in our case, and in everyone that's watching right now, we are watching. And we're, we're here watching Legends. it with you, and I feel like it's that's the most valuable part. It is. And I mean, I mean you, I mean everyone at home. I even mean Degon. Why would you negatively think about <laughs> Degon, man? Just wanted What's to, with the hazing? I just, well, I just needed to let him know that I also mean Degon. I feel like I never got hazed that badly, but then I fought no, back. You, you were, I you just were, never, you I've arrived never in COVID. Yeah. So that, but also, it wasn't as much of the opportunity. In, in ways, I think I never left the, the <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's somewhat self-inflicted. Yeah. If you want to watch the, uh, if you want to watch an example of this, you can just watch the uh, most recent Poxdead episode, where the hazing of Digon didn't last very long, and we were back <laughs> on to Chronicler pretty quickly. As uh, three thousand gold is almost the lead for Bro. Uh, checking in to what the game is doing. Da -da -da -da. Anything to. Um, we're getting towards free item spikes on some people. True. That's cool. Uh, Sylvie should have his Warmox very soon, which is a very important buy. We're, we're hitting um, wards that yeah. are on the map here. Gold, most of it is on the right champions. For for Breon. Uh, Geo is a little bit starved. Yeah. Hasn't hasn't really had the best performance. Look, third item done now for Samford. That's big. LDR already available for him. Yeah. And this is again going to be a big fight. No soul point available, and Nongshim, they need an actual front oh. to back. I think in the last fight we saw there is no in the no out of turret here as extended beam comes in. But they can't run the risk to go too far. Ow! Gee, that, that's what they need. They're going to have to find these chunks. This is actually quite big. Getting it onto the enemy jungler is a big win. Oh, I would love it if they just let Mihao do that. This is a. Okay. A bit of a gambit, but I don't think they actually should. Yeah, I actually love this. Yeah. Longshim. Mihail just going to start this one oh off. My that God, is going to no, be soul gonna... point. Never mind. No, he should get it. He should. I think we see the question mark ping because the rest of Nongshim is just keeping them busy. Oh, Sam is just skating in. He's going to get the flash out of Jiwoo, and Mihail is back towards this dragon. I don't know if, I don't know if he has the time. Oh, he's going to go mini. Is he in time? Yeah, he's oh, take it. Well, I mean, if they ran over as soon as possible. They definitely could have stopped them, but your mind, Your mind is working way too fast for this game, okay? I feel like it might have made sense uh, in our previous series or other ones here in the LCK, but I mean, he had that. 
from, I'm, I'm from trying, minute one. I'm trying to think like the wind when I should be thinking like the ebb and flow of the ocean. Exactly. Ah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a horse race and a turtle race, right? And I think you know which one you're in. <laughs> what much a turtle race? <laughs> turtle racing is actually apparently super cool. I spoke to a guy who was all about it just the other day. That's such a niche thing. Yeah. That's so cool. I think I, I imagine that there's a whole like a whole community of people that can tell you all about it, Chronicle. If there's anyone that's into turtle racing, um, <laughs> let us know. Well, they only got soul points, so Noxium really don't want to give up this dash. I imagine Brian just peel off though. Can they? Is the question. Glacial Prison comes in. Noxium say nope. We don't want to get flanked, they but don't maybe know. that's just what's happening. And Polo, the hero once again. Three in the Maelstrom will be sliced up for Mihail. Taking matters into his own hands. They take down Samba. Cougar is going to fall, but now it's all about Morgan. Can the Lord stand his ground and make way for the Emperor? And it looks like the answer is absolutely he can. Emperor's Divide was saved just to take down the Yone. And bro, they didn't commit to the Baron, so they don't lose that and they win the fight. And that was a wonderful flank there from Morgan. Extremely nicely done, but the problem is, Mihao saves that fight for Nongshim. If he didn't get that ultimate, oh yeah, that could have been the end of it. And here, oh man, they knew about the ward. It's pinged. It's not the ward closer to them. Ah, they really should have seen this one coming. But credit. There were wards done. everywhere. No, but they, they they pinged it. They knew this was coming. Paulu again sets up for a beautiful. Yeah, Morgan gets exhausted. Doesn't matter. Fisher continues to not have an impact. But Mihao, man. Oh, the flash Q follow up from Fisher is good. But Mihao, if he doesn't find that multi-man knock-up into Crush like that, yeah. that could have been a disaster. He will end up making his way out, and then, unfortunately for Fisher, his uh, struggles on the Onate do continue. And uh, fortunately for Bro, they have Polo, who is just a madman, a monster. Even in the last game that they lost, I mean, Polo set it up, and they just weren't able to roll the bowling ball down, you know, the thing that they give kids so that yeah. you don't actually have to throw the bowling ball. Oh, Morgan, Morgan, down Morgan! Is Morgan! He's going to get hit by Polo to take it out! He just pops like a little yordle balloon! Polo, and Polo was oh. on the flank of a lifetime! It's, it, they got to do it. Nongshim is going to start oh, this. Oh, Commander Karras. They don't right. know. Oh. They're on it. No, they Polo's on a control ward. Yeah, no, they spotted him. They know. Okay. He's going to get walloped, thrown into the wall. Is this a steal opportunity, though? As Young Jay, he sets it up. Guga's down so incredibly low, but they just both explode. Karras is still there. They have a fair bit of damage. Just, oh, I, well, I don't know about that one, but there's still the ulti from Fisher taking a lot of damage. Now the Sand Soldiers, there's the double, and now they're trying to fight this Baron. It's down incredibly low. Can they keep themselves alive? They will secure it. There's now Karras. Fighting against Chiwu, the skate away there as Iddy goes once again and takes down the Ezreal! And Samba's still up. There's only two with Baron though at the end. This game is insane. Hold the build up, Atlas. And the teams are delivering. Brion and Nongshim fighting in an all out brawl. The Baron goes to Nongshim, sure. But the main question is, can they actually utilize this as we take another look? Oh, Morgan on a ward. Sylvie, yep, Morgan on a ward. Sylvie, what a catch there. So nicely done. And the fact that this is even remotely close is kind of insane in and of itself. I think the, uh, yeah, the scuttle actually ends up spotting Palu. They know that he's there. Mihal does a lot of damage. Gugar uh, definitely should have pulled it earlier. A bit unfortunate there. But Kart, look at look at Karas. Yeah. He's just standing there. He has banana brush control. And if Mihal doesn't dodge that, I actually think the fight is so long. And Fisher ults in, unfortunately, not in the mark again. And also, if Fisher got hit by the damage from the Emperor's Divide, which uh, helped confirm his demise in that one as well. And then we take another look here. So, I don't, like, I know that he gets the kill. I don't know if that's actually the right call. I even mean, if, getting rid of Baron sort of. Well, I, I know, but it's Ezreal, right? So I feel like Ezreal is always going to be with the team anyway. Yeah. But as you're saying, I think with the Baron, it probably is. And they didn't get mid lane turret. That's actually what I was worried about, that because of Karvis dying, they would be able to get mid. Not the case. And this is the sole point fight. Nongshim, they have Baron buff. They could play for side lanes. They could play for mid lane turret. But guess what? That's not what they're about, Atlas. Oh, true shot barrage. That's what they're about. The now. poke! Yeah, Apollo going to have to get out of there. 
Look at Mihail. He is going to hit Mega. Not actually able to utilize it right now. Banana Brush Control well and truly oh, there for bar. Bro Polo. He can't engage. Just can't do it anymore. Googler, yeah. Uh, and this is a very oh, big... Uh, look at that control. <laughs> oh, Nongshim. That was gorgeous. And Jiu. This KDA hasn't been great. He's been outflanked, outfought by Morgan in basically every major team fight. But right there, he landed the poke that he needed to. Ends up being really big. And Nongshim still down in gold, but the Hextech Soul, Hextech Soul with, yeah, with Yone. Ezreal. Well, Ezreal is, is the big one when it comes to consistently getting those slow procs and getting the poke. But like, even look at the ability is that it's actually done Nar yeah. on Yone. Like, phew. No one's going to be upset uh, about having that one. I actually love the itemization here as well. Everyone on Nongshim is building for an incredible amount of magic resist because there's not that much AD damage. Even Semver, right? Part of yeah. it will be magic. And right now, if the initial brunt of Bro's composition isn't enough to take someone down, they're really going to struggle. And the cannon, not going to have nearly as much value. Does have his void stuff now completed. It's big. Really good pivot to be picking that one up third instead of uh, fourth or something like that. You mentioned Deathcap earlier. I think he still wants to build one, but stopping to collect the Void Star, very important, as you see all of these Negatron cloaks in the back pocket. So now, with this soul, bro, looking like they're a little bit worried about where to fight and who to fight. It's okay, Karis. Good trigger finger there. A bit of sidestep the Glacial Prison, but so if he can just do this. He can feel free to throw it in. Orga. Oh, the flank oh, angle. Oh, spotted! They okay. know! Yeah, they know. They've got so many pings coming out here. Is Sylvie just going to move on over? Find the Yordle! Oh, dear. There's the ulti. He's caught. No lightning rush available. And he has no arm guard. There is no chance to stay alive long enough. Oh, at, at least there were two paths for him. If he takes the other path, he's yeah. fine. He did it. Like, they, it was a 50-50. He doesn't know where the wards are. But Sometimes in the choose your own adventure, it's not what you actually expect when you flip to the page uh, that seems to be the right one. Oh dear. Okay, Nongshim still trying to take down this outer turret. The wave clear is certainly yeah, they, uh, still very good without Baron. Nongshim's objective control has not. When it comes to anything that isn't dragons, it's not been great. Can um, you say that something's not great if it's not really there? As Fisher is now trying to get himself out of the way. Oh, this Hextech soul is so annoying. The quickness does come in, and they will kill him. He is definitely very dead. Can they find more, though, is the question. Is Sylvie able to get a nice smite on the Raptor? That's going to help him get his eye in for the smites on Baron. And now the gold is evened out. Oh. It's even gold, and there's a Hextech soul on one side. Yeah, right here. If Morgan takes the lower path, that, that might be... Honestly, a game-winning fight. If he gets a big ultimate and they can just push mid, that could be enough, but does get spotted. He walked that little bit further. I, yeah, if he, if he takes the... the yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. He doesn't know. As Fisher, um, this game has, unfortunately for him, not been, uh, not been ideal. I think the Yone is one of those characters where, yes, you have a lot of escape tools if you are in a safe position to begin with. And... He really hasn't been. Fortunately, I think Mihal stepping up again. Sylvie maintains composure. Brian, though, it's not done yet. If they can get a big enough wombo combo between Karis, between Morgan, there's still an angle here. Yeah. Brings it to the game number three. The thing is, like, they just need both Morgan and Karis to go for it at the same time. That's how it needs to work, because then Samba can kill everyone. Or he just gets engaged on. The exhaust comes down. Empress Divide is going to pick up a Meganar. Samba's still able to get himself out of the way. There's a slicing Maelstrom. Basically forgettable, but Karis is still able to get one. He dies for it, but now Morgan is raining the damage in, and this should be the Zeri time. This should be the moment. The but they're so slow. Oh, it's just heartbreaking. Okay, there's going to be the knockup from Young J. Permafrost comes in to stop him. And now Samba gets over. Fisher taking the chip damage. There's the knockup. And he wasn't the hero until that moment. And he's done it. As now Jiwoo just looking to chase them down. Morgan Ooh, wasn't oh. on vision there for the moment. It's an even trade, Chronicler. And, and Nongshim is, is lucky that Fisher pulled out together because Jiwoo, that. That's not my Chiwu, man. I watched him miss a lot of cues there, Atlas. Yeah. Could have been an easier fight. And I think it's again 
The engage Polo is really trying. The fact that Samper goes in like that is a little bit insane. I think you need a little bit of insanity at this point in the game. The problem is that all of that goes into a Meganar, as you highlight. Uh, yeah, you're gonna chew for Mihal. Yes, you're gonna chew for Guger. But this still is a position where I think Nongshim should be fine if, again, Jiu gets more damage down. But he actually isn't able to meaningfully contribute, partially because of Morgan kind of zoning him away. And because of that, Damage from Samver, this Zeris, four items, so insanely strong, but then that double knock-up salvages it. Yeah. Fisher, as, as highlighted, as you said as well, hasn't had the greatest game, but that moment right there in a game as messy as this, huh. ends up being, yeah, now that's, that's, that's Baron, that's Elder, that might just be it. We're gonna get the cool graphic, but unless Yongjae gets the steal of a lifetime, I think Nongshim have done it, Atlas. I think so too, however, 20 seconds. And... Death cap's done, Void stuff's done. Morgan I mean, is all in. He is. The fact that the Hourglass is there for Karras as well might be able to keep him alive for a little bit longer. Samba has some amount oh, of no. life steal as Oh, there's the flash. Fisher now doesn't have the ulti for the team fight. This could be huge. The dragon now alive. Young Jay looking to try and push them in. Crescent Guard comes out now. That is ulti for ulti trade. Oh, Still be down to 50%. Yeah, like you say, Warmox. Going to be playing a huge part. Bro's got to send it. We've been saying that Bro's got to send it the entire series. That's sent in the wrong direction. Now the quickness comes in. The grand entrance is great. The Empress divide to buy the space. And the Bros now stand together. The Dragon getting angry. Cooldowns one after the other are falling for both teams. No one's really getting ground though. Now CPing. Is it just going to be a 50-50 is the question. Look at these health bars. They're going solo. The Hextech Soul. It's so powerful now, Fisher finding an angle. Gets himself out, rebinds the soul, true shot barrage goes nowhere. As now the ulti's in, Samba gets one onto the jungle of Morgan. Morgan finding the angle, gets into the back line. Fisher going down so low, but the cannon is dead first. Samba goes down. And Nongshim, I don't know how it happened. It looked like it may not happen, but then it finally did. And Fisher's gonna dive on top of Youngjae. And I can't believe it's going to be a 2-0 for Nongshim when Bro were basically winning both games until they lost. And that team fight, Jiu not of the best time, but he makes it work there. So much damage done by the Ezreal. He was eing in aggressively, playing like a maniac. <laughs> uh, the Hexex Soul getting so much value. That ends up, I think, being the biggest difference maker. Man, this game for Brion. Yeah. It felt so attainable, but that makes it worse, Atlas. It so really close, yet so far, as Nongshim gets a 2-0. Youngjae battling all the way until the end. And my goodness, I feel like that was maybe a, a best of five, just with how much time there was. But it was a 2-0. And Nongshim are going to be the ones to take it. I thought that maybe this was the time that the bros found their win. But I think perhaps a bit of experimentation has now been done for this week. I think a lot of us now know or have a bit more understanding as to maybe what bro looks best at. And coming in after your team has just lost is really difficult to do and have a good performance, right? So maybe next week you can see Karras and Samba come in first. Maybe then they'll be able to get something done. Not against uh, D+, or Gen.G, or whichever team that they're facing off against first, uh, because that's just going to be a rough time. But outside of that, maybe that's going to be their opportunity to find a better foot forward. Nongshim getting a very important win here. The second one, they beat DRX earlier. Chiu. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, that's the first time in a while we've seen that man smile. His Ezreal took a little bit of time to get going, but once it was going... Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. He found a few of those, uh, the crucial mis Mystic shots when they were playing the K-Ram, and that has been a lot of where we see teams get windows with this. I think Viper showed us pretty immaculately yesterday um, just how much you can get done in the neutral with the Ezreal. Didn't really see it in game number one, but here we Atlas, definitely did. Don't sully the present by thinking about the past. This series stands alone. <laughs> I don't need no comparisons oh. to Viper's S real. That's that's true. I, I mean, it's it's a it's, it was a very different day. It was a different time. It was probably a different oh, patch. And I am I'm glad we get the little zoom in because 
I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big Dundon fan. We all know it. Uh, half for memes, half because I think that he's had great moments. I mean, I, I think he's picking up a PRG in this one. I hope so, because I think that you know, if you're, if you only tune in for the final game, final fight, then she was a great vote, you know. <laughs> but outside of that, I do think there were a couple of really big moments uh, where we saw Mihal make it happen, where he kept it together so that the rest of his team was fine. Karis, though, again, He's comes in as a super sub. And that, to me, is the most heartbreaking point about this series, is that both those games for Brion were 100% winnable. And oh, that yeah. makes it worse. It's like, not it's even winnable. It's, they should have won. I and think that's they, game one, even worse. 100%. Worse. Yeah. No, it, it, it is. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. And you can see just the doubt seep in. Yeah, it's not. And it's kind of to be expected from teams that do find themselves in these positions, right? When it's the more losing you do, the harder it is to find the angles to win, to feel confident enough to go for those plays. And you can see it's really bearing down on the pros here. Uh, Mihail, though, I do want to congratulate him on his Naba control oh, in, this, oh, okay. in this series. It was absolutely, like, around Dragons especially, he'd just be walking around with the bright yellow bar over and over again at a moment's notice, ready to hit that Mega when they needed it. Yeah. And they're just talking about how the last fight went. And uh, you could see that Nongshim, they still had to work really hard. Guga here just uh, fighting with Young Jae until the very end. It's feels like a very tough 2-0. Oh, oh, Mia. Yeah, Mahal's happy. Look at him go. It, the Particularly <laughs> not losing your mind, you know, I think that's where the challenger's experience really comes in. And oh, uh, yeah, uh, obviously Jiu is going to be the top damage dealer. That shouldn't come as a surprise. But man, Nong again, that gold graph, it's not as bad as the last game, but it's still, it's painful if you're a believer. Although it, then again, Bro doesn't need wins. I, I do think that, so we talk about Bro fans and we talk about just how resilient they are. I'm feeling for Edgar, man. I'm just worried about how he's feeling because he's, I don't obviously they're drilling these great. early games over and over again and they're working and they're working and they're working. And then the getting to the Nexus to kill it thing is a problem. Perhaps we've got some gentlemen waiting alongside though that could Give us some insight onto how they could kill an Exos or two before the end of the round robin. Take it away, Spacers. Thank you very much. This is Deer for the POG interview translation. Joined by Selby and Mihail on the side of Nongshim Red Force, who just escaped a chain of losses. Congratulations! Sylvie, you guys were so desperate to end your losing streak, and so what a sweet victory it must be for you. How do you feel? Being able to escape by losing streak with a 2-0 makes me so happy. And Mihail, it's the first time we're seeing you on the interview zone. Congrats, uh, congrats on your first POG. This must be such a meaningful win since this is your first victory after your LCK debut. How do you feel? After seeing my team win against DRX, you know, I really wanted to feel and indulge in that moment of victory myself as well. And I'm, I'm, it feels so surreal that I'm actually right here feeling that right now. And Sylvie, what mindset did you come to stage with today? Since we had such good results with scrims, uh, I think we came up thinking we're going to win no matter what. And in game one, with your Poppy gameplay, you got your POG. And this was your first time picking Poppy this summer. So what strength were you looking for comp-wise? I think we had the Azir Poppy. And those have really good synergy, especially against Sejuani. So that's why we went with these picks. And Mihail, and as someone who prefers Aatrox, you have been playing him pretty often. And of course, we saw how solid your Aatrox was in game one. And that would be patch 14.13's first Aatrox win. So how is Aatrox in the current meta? I feel like it really depends on how you 
actually play Aatrox, the different play style, but I think being able to sort of maintain uh, control in the laning phase actually paid off, and my teammates, of course, had a huge part in that too. And Sylvie, in game one, just from looking at the goal chart, the enemy had a huge lead and, and, and also control over the game, so how did you manage to turn it around? I felt like, you know, just in, in terms of comps, we knew that we had better value, so being able to be able to just play it out slow and stall the game actually helped a lot. And in a crucial moment, there was a super play by Sylvie. Let's take a look at this replay. And you stole this Baron. Did you expect that skill? Honestly, I told myself, even if it doesn't work, I have to commit to it. And I thought Sejuani was blown away. But she wasn't. But regardless, I kept my cool and I, I stayed calm and then I was able to pull that skill off. And then with another Baron objective, you closed out game one with a win. And after the comeback, we saw you guys have a team meeting, so what was the plan for game two? Now, we told ourselves that there might be a lot of changes in the drafting phase, but I think the mindset we went into the uh, second game was that as long as we do what we normally do, we have the capability to win. So I think that's what really helped. And this was your first time facing Morgan, Mihail. So was there any... Did he give you any trouble? <laughs> I, honestly, I just I just played without feeling timid or scared and that actually worked really well for me. And in game two, we got our fir longest first blood. It took 17 minutes for the first blood, so what, what made you guys play out so slow? It felt like as long as one, one side gets the first blood, it would give that team so much momentum, so we were really careful in playing playing the game out in game two. And let's take a look at this this team fight replay. Can you walk us through what happened here? You know, it started out with me dying so meaninglessly, and I thought we would be losing. But I think we just kept our pool and we really just went step by step into killing uh, the enemy one by one. So I think we did really well. And Mihal, would you like to give your fans a shout out? Thank you so much for coming out today. And I hope that we're, we put in enough effort to be able to show you more winning uh, and Vic are us winning the game. And Sylvie, you know, every week our fans show up cheering for us, and I really want to say thank you. And we'll make sure that we're able to keep it up, so please keep cheering us on. And Sylvie, it looks like your parents are here on site. Would you like to say anything to them? You know, my parents always cheer me on, they always message me on Katok. I just want to say thank you. I'm so grateful for you too. And they, that's the end of the interview from Sylvia and Mihail and back to the space. Thank you.